thank you for joining. We're getting started really soon. So hopefully none of you have had any problems with eating fruit in terms of your teeth. But it's quite conventional. A lot of people do expect that to be the problem. Or they do expect they're going to get a problem with that. Sorry, I'm getting some messages coming through. Oh, excellent. We've got a lot more people join. Good to see you all. Feel free to put your questions in the side. The question would be, is anyone, because this is going to be about dental health and raw vegan diet. So have any of you had any problems with your teeth, dental health? Feel free to put something in the chat box, which is over here. And you can put your name in. You don't have to, but you can do all that if you like. And feel free to ask other people if they want to join. This is a topic I think is very important because there's a lot of people who have had problems when it comes to their teeth from the raw vegan diet, which is obviously the last thing you want because you're looking to, you're only really doing this because you want it to be the healthiest thing possible. You want to feel really great because um, you're giving up, you're giving up so many things. You're giving up all your junk foods and all the things you used to love and everything else. So why would you give all that up if you're not going to get something amazing out of it? And that's what you want to get is tremendous, fantastic health and if you're having problems, why would you be doing this? So a lot of people have become very skeptical about this diet because they've had dental issues or issues with their teeth. So we wanna go through that tonight. So thank you for joining. And what I'll, what I'll do is I'll share some information um, here. I've just got some notes that I've taken. So I'll be putting all this up. Uh, control shift. Okay, excellent, good. Good, okay. So I'll be sharing this, I'll be sharing the screen, and we'll get into it. But thank you for joining. And let me share this screen or this document. Let's see how it works. Advanced sharing options, share. That's not it, is it? Hmm, okay. Share the whiteboard. Ah, here we go. This is what we're sharing. So you should be able to see this. And I'll just make this, oh, better not. I'll just leave it as it is. So, dental health on a raw vegan diet is the name of this presentation. I'm hoping that you can all see this. You can put a message down if you can or can't, not any problems. But the first question is, why should we talk about this? Many people have said that they have had issues with their teeth when they went on a raw vegan diet. This has not only affected newbies and people that maybe didn't know what they were doing, but it has affected people that consider themselves to be experts on this lifestyle. So we've seen people who have at one point or other been eating a lot of fruit, eating a raw vegan diet that have had issues, including people like Tim Van Orden, who... Uh, has the website running raw and he was doing a raw food diet for many years and he had um, some problems with his teeth that he put online and talked about. Harley Johnstone that was durian rider he also had problems with his teeth even though at one point he said he didn't have any problems with his teeth but that that's something sometimes that people have done. Frederick Patinod who is uh, he, he's maybe not so much promoting the raw vegan diet now, but he was at one point and he did a, used to do a presentation on this topic as well. And Michael Arnstein, who runs the Woodstock Fruit Festival, he's, he has a video out where he talks about some issues that he's had with his teeth. So 
these um, are just some examples, but there's been other people that have come in and out of the raw vegan movement because of issues with their teeth. However, there have also been many who have reported no issues or have never had a cavity. So people like Christina, Carilla Bukaram, Julia Rock Christina, she's, she reports not really having any problems with her teeth. Chris Kendall, who's a friend of mine, he's been on a raw vegan diet, I think, 15 years. And he's even said to me that he didn't really particularly take good care of his teeth in terms of brushing and flossing and stuff like that. And he's and he basically never had a cavity regardless. And Dr. Doug Graham talks about going to the dentist and the dentist just said, keep doing what you're doing, your teeth are fine. So he had he's had some teeth removed from his previous diet when he was younger. But um, since then, apparently he's not really had any problems. So what are people doing wrong? Or is it inevitable in this lifestyle that some people will su suffer from problems with their teeth? Is there something that people are doing differently? Or is it genetics? Or is it something that you're doing, something that you're missing out on? So what is the problem? And this is a quote from Dr. Doug Graham. I've been to the dentist many times. I've never met a raw vegan there. So basically, if people are to say to you, you're going to get issues with your teeth on this diet, well, the dentists are full of people that don't eat fruit. The dentists are full of people that don't eat a raw vegan diet. So the problem is obviously not fruit. It's not a raw vegan diet. It's happening to, to everyone. So here is what we hear, because if you are doing a raw diet and you go on some forums, you might read books, you might have went to presentations, you get a lot of different information about this topic. And if you if you were to put a question to say, I'm having a problem with my teeth, you would get loads of responses and you would get lots of different people giving you a different opinion. So here's some of the things that I usually hear people say. They often say that the problem, if you're having problems with your teeth, is you're not getting enough greens or vegetables. So the idea with that is that some people go on a strictly fruitarian diet or they don't eat any vegetables at all. They're just eating fruit. And the idea will be that you can't, that you're not getting enough minerals or you're not getting enough of some nutrient and that you need to eat greens or vegetables to make sure you get everything. And if you don't do that, then you won't get enough minerals and that will erode your teeth. That's one idea. Not enough vegetables. I've written that down twice. I don't know why. <laughs> I think I meant to say not enough greens, not enough vegetables. But anyway, not enough mineral in the soil. So this is a pretty common one as well. It is the idea that none of the fruits and vegetables are adequate nowadays, which to me is a little bit of a scare story. So the idea is that all the soil has been eroded, uh, everything's been destroyed, there's glyphosate in all the soils, and we're not growing nutritious food anymore. Um, this is an idea. I'm not really particularly convinced that this is actually accepted by the mainstream of science, by the people that study these things. And when people are talking about soil erosion, is that soil erosion in fruit farms and in vegetable farms? Or are they talking about soil erosion in the massive monocrop farms of uh, soybeans and things like that designed for uh, uh, animal consumption in the, in the animal agriculture industry rather than fruit farms, vegetable farms, for human consumption. I think people are getting a little bit mixed up with all these different stories. And some of the people that say there's not enough minerals in the soil, they say we need to put those minerals back in with supplementation. And this is an appealing idea to people uh, that we can add minerals and things to our food uh, or, or as, a, as a form of supplement. But to me, this all seems a little bit like a, a marketing process, a sales process. Let's cause fear in people. Let's make them think their food's all deficient. And this is what's been used to sell superfoods, supplements, um, protein powders, all these kind of things. You know, the food's not, your food's not got nutrition in it. And, and where people are getting this idea, I don't really know. And the big question is, 
how do the supplement people and the, uh, the the vitamin suppliers and the supplement makers and the people making the superfoods, how come their soil is good? How come their soil has all the rich minerals and everything that we need? So that's a real kind of um, confusing thing. And then also the big issue um, that people bring up is the acid in the fruit. So fruit is acidic, of course. So like this is a grape and this grape has acids in it. And indeed, many of the vitamins that we need are acid and many of the nutrients that we need are acids. So vitamin C is ascorbic acid and we require acids for different functions in the body. But what they're often saying is the fruit's been picked too soon, so it is more acidic. Now, I don't think that's always the case, but certain fruits might be. I think most of them just taste more acidic because there's less sugar. And I think that's what they're getting confused by. But to me, people don't really eat acidic fruit. I don't see a lot of people like force feeding themselves unripe fruit. So I'm not sure how this is a big issue. And for sure, there are fruits that taste less acidic, that um, when they're ripe, you can't really taste the acidity, but that doesn't mean they're not acidic. And my question really with this is, if you go to your dentist and you do have problems with your teeth, are they telling you that you're eating a lot of acidic food? Because your dentist should be able to tell the type of erosion that you've got, the type of damage you've got. And if you ask them, is this to do with acidic food, they'll probably be able to tell you if it is or it isn't because they'll understand the pattern of damage. The truth is that acidity in the fruit or people eating unripe fruits is not the problem, never has been the problem, can't really be the problem, not really possible to be the problem uh, because that's, that's not really the process. The problem is tooth decay. So maybe I should make all these right and bigger, I don't know. But the problem is tooth decay, let's make that bigger. <laughs> the problem is called tooth decay. Stop share for a second. Thanks for joining. Thanks for joining everyone. So the problem is tooth decay. And that is the problem that we have to deal with. That is the issue. So when people have problems with their teeth, it's almost always tooth decay. There is maybe a couple of other things that it could be. But the vast majority of the time, the reason that we have dentists on every street in every town in the world is because of the process of tooth decay. This is the thing that we have to deal with. And it's no different on a raw vegan diet. And we're going to go through that in a moment. Is tooth decay a raw vegan problem? The answer is no. Is this a raw vegan problem? No, obviously. Obviously, and quite easy to prove that to you. Worldwide, there's approximately 2.3 billion people have dental caries in their permanent teeth. So dental caries is another name for the, the uh, impact of tooth decay. We call them um, fillings. Or, yeah, we don't know. We don't call them fillings, but we call it. Yeah, we, we kind of call it that. But. Yeah, worldwide, approximately 2.3 billion people, 32% of the population have dental caries in their permanent teeth. And I think that there is a statistic that almost all adults at some point will have some tooth decay. Almost all adults in the entire world. So it's clearly not a raw vegan problem. If it was a fruit problem, we wouldn't have the problem because no one eats fruit. I mean, literally, think about it. How many people do you know that actually eat fruit on a regular basis? People might eat a piece of fruit a day. They might even eat two pieces of fruit a day. They probably do have tomatoes and a lot of things they eat. So technically that's a fruit as well. But realistically, the vast majority of food that is consumed in the world is not fruit. And that's not the problem here or the issue. So quite simple. Let's look up some information from Wikipedia about tooth decay so that we can understand it and we can try and work out why is why are people on a raw vegan diet get some issues with tooth decay? We can look at that. So let's read through this. 
So tooth decay, also known as dental caries, cavities, is a breakdown of the teeth due to acids made by bacteria. So this is why I'm saying it's not about acidic fruit. It's not about minerals and mineral deficiencies and all that stuff. It is the process of tooth decay is a breakdown of teeth due to acids made by bacteria. So you have bacteria in your mouth. They feed on and live on your teeth. They feed on things that you eat. And when they have finished digesting the food they eat, they will then excrete that food in an acidic form. And that acid is what erodes the teeth. The cavities may be a number of different colors from yellow to black. Essentially, the inside of your tooth, tooth is getting rotten. Symptoms include pain, difficulty with eating. We understand that. Complications may include inflammation of the issue around the tooth, tooth loss, and infection or abscess formation. So that's all kind of uh, a bit more advanced stuff. Now, here's the important thing. The cause of cavities of tooth decay is acid from bacteria dissolving the hard tissues of the teeth. The acid is produced by the bacteria when they break down food debris or sugar on the tooth surface. So the cause is that these bacteria are on your teeth and they're breaking down the food into acid. And most importantly here, simple sugars in food are these bacteria's primary energy source and thus a diet high in simple sugar is a risk factor. Okay. So here's where we're starting to understand that the problem is simple sugars in foods are these bacteria's primary energy source, thus a diet high in simple sugar is a risk factor. Okay. And here's a further explanation. Because you might think, well, why don't our teeth just erode completely, if that's the case? Um, it's because our saliva is constantly, one of the things with our saliva is that it is actually remineralizing our teeth. So when this damage is done, the, our, our saliva washes over our teeth and the minerals in the saliva help to remineralize the teeth. So this is a natural ebb and flow of the state of your mouth, which is that we eat food, our teeth inevitably get damaged, even in just a small way by the process of eating, just like you go to the gym, you work out, you damage your muscles, and they grow back. Well, we damage our food when we damage our teeth to some extent when we eat, but the saliva comes in to remineralize. If the mineral breakdown is greater than the buildup from the sources such as saliva, then caries result, cavities result. So essentially, if your body's ability to remineralize your teeth is affected, inhibited, is not able to do its job properly then you will inevitably get tooth decay. And here's some risk factors. Uh, because having less saliva is a problem, therefore, anything that leads to your mouth being dry, uh, not producing enough saliva, all these things are a problem. So we've got diabetes here and some other medications and things like that. That can, that can be a problem. Um, caries is also associated with poverty, poor cleaning of the mouth, receding gums, and exposure of the result, resulting in exposure of the roots of the teeth. So a few other issues there. Now here's prevention. Prevention of dental caries includes regular cleaning of the teeth. So why would that be? Why would we want to regularly clean our teeth? Why is that recommended? Well, primarily it's about removing everything that's on the surface of the teeth from the teeth. So removing the food so the bacteria don't have anything to eat. Um, obviously removing the bacteria themselves so that they're not there. And uh, well, those are really the two main things. Clean, that is what cleaning the teeth is all about. It's not really about adding something to the teeth. Primarily it is about removing the things that are stuck to the teeth, the food and what's called the biofilm, which I think we'll get into in a moment which is a film that kind of sticks to your teeth. And that's one of the real problems. So we need to be cleaning that off. Um, if mineral breakdown is greater than buildup, so we went through that little part, 
So prevention of dental caries includes regular cleaning of teeth, a diet low in sugar. We're going to get to this in a moment because you're probably thinking, well, a raw vegan diet is high in sugar, so we can't do it. Um, but we'll get to that. And small amounts of fluoride. So this is a controversial area. A lot of people in the natural health movement, the raw food movement, um, fruit, and the fruitarian movement or whatever, they don't like fluoride. <laughs> they don't like these chemicals in the food. There's a lot of people that are kind of... Uh, politically don't like anything added to the water. They don't like the government doing things, conspiracy theory sort of stuff. But according to the science that we have, according to dentists, according to dental science, according to the mainstream of dental science, fluoride is one of the substances, basically the only substance that has been shown to help reduce, um, reduce tooth decay, especially when applied in brushing teeth. And there's a couple of reasons for that. I don't think we'll go into that in detail right now, but basically the fluoride, part of what it does is it kills the bacteria. So a lot of people say fluoride's toxic um, or antibiotic or whatever. And that is partly right, although that in itself is not a good argument for anything because there's, there are, there's arsenic in fruits, there is uh, what's that other stuff that kills people? The arsenic, cyanide. There's cyanide. I believe I'm pretty sure there's cyanide in fruits and vegetables, but just in a very a very small amount. So you could always say there's something toxic in your in your food. It's about the dosage. It's not about whether it's toxic or not. And really, everything is toxic depending on the dosage. Um, there's potassium in fruit. If you were just to take a big lump of potassium, put it in your mouth that wouldn't be a great idea. It'd probably blow your head off or something. But in the quantity in fruits, it's fine. When it comes to... When it comes to... Um, sorry, I was getting a phone call there. Should have turned my phone off. When it comes to fluoride and toothpaste, then... I understand that a lot of people say, well, even the toothpaste says do not swallow, it's toxic and all that. But yeah, it's not a food. You know, toothpaste isn't a food source. You're not meant to eat it. You're meant to apply it to your teeth and then spit it out. So I, I don't have any negativity towards fluoride and I'll maybe get to my own story around that later. I'm not necessarily saying you need to use it, but it, it could help. Um, so where are we here? Brushing the teeth twice a day, flossing, fluoride, and then more information. Once again, it affects a lot of children, blah, blah, blah. So the cause of tooth decay in more detail. The important thing in life, if we, if we wanna stop something happening, we need to know what causes it, and then we can make changes. If we don't know what causes it, then we can't, we can't get rid of the problem, right? So four things that are required for caries formation. Number one, a tooth surface. So obviously if you don't have any teeth, you're not gonna get it. I don't know why they even add that in, but that's what they, that's what they say, a tooth surface, so you've got to have teeth. Caries causing bacteria. So the bacteria are generally called streptococcus mutans, and they are in your mouth right now. Fermentable carbohydrates such as sucrose, and they do tend to say that sucrose is more cariogenic than fructose or glucose, which are what's in fruit. So sucrose is more of a problem. <laughs> and then lastly, time. So that's the four things that are required. If one of these things is not there, then it can't happen. But, you know, I, I'm not really sure why they put it like this, but obviously time in our physical universe is going to be there all the time. But uh, you need to have the caries causing bacteria and you need to have the fermentable carbohydrates. And this is important right here. This process involves the adherence of food to the teeth and acid creation by the bacteria that makes up the dental plaque. So what it means there is the, the food sticking to the teeth. This is important. This is what we're going to get to more. The adherence of the food to the teeth, the sticking of the food to the teeth, and the acid creation by the bacteria that is 
eating that which is stuck to the teeth makes up the dental plaque. And this is the interesting concept. Tooth decay is caused by biofilm dental plaque lying on the teeth and maturing to become cariogenic, which means it causes decay. Certain bacteria in the biofilm produce acid in the presence of fermentable carbohydrates such as sucrose, fructose, and glucose. So this is a really important point. It involves the sticky, basically the food sticking to the teeth, which creates this dental plaque. The tooth decay is caused by biofilm, dental plaque lying on the teeth and maturing. So this is why brushing your teeth is a big thing. You're trying to remove this biofilm that is, that is happening on people's teeth. And certain bacteria in the biofilm produce acid. That acid is produced in the presence of fermentable carbohydrates, sucrose, fructose, glucose. So by now you may be thinking, well, maybe the answer is just to get rid of all the sugar in your diet. And that's what some people have, have done in the past and tried. And, and because fermentable carbohydrates are a requirement for this to happen, if you did remove all the fermentable carbohydrates from your diet, then technically you couldn't have any tooth decay. Um, but the problem with that is the impact on the rest of your health if you remove carbohydrates from your diet. This is the problem. So that's not a good solution because you're either going to eat no food, which is impossible, or you're going to eat a diet without carbohydrates, which um, especially carbohydrates with simple sugars. And that is not going to be healthy for the rest of your body. If you're going to live on fats um, and a high fat diet, that's just not going to be worth it. So what we really want to find is how can we do the healthier diet, the high carbohydrate diet with fruits and vegetables, how can we do that and not get any caries or problems with our teeth? So let's keep going. These four criteria are not always enough to cause the disease and a sheltered environment promoting development of a cardiogenic biofilm is required. The caries, the caries disease process does not have an inevitable outcome and different individuals will be susceptible to different degrees depending on the shape of their teeth, oral hygiene habits and the buffering capacity of their saliva. So this is why we have different people having some people have more of an issue than others. And we think it may be a genetic thing or, or so on, but it could literally be to do with the, the buffering capacity of the saliva. It's often to do with different oral hygiene habits. And even here it says it could be to do with the shape of their teeth, because for example, if you've not got as many, if you've got bigger gaps between your teeth, you're probably less likely to have stuff stick between your teeth. So less of an issue. Dental caries can occur on any surface of a tooth that's exposed to the oral cavity, but not the structure that are retained within the bone. So, some information on dietary sugars. So this is what we're getting to, really, because obviously we're, we're realizing the problem involves sugar. So what do we do about this then? And, and um, Essentially, bacteria in a person's mouth convert glucose, fructose, and most commonly sucrose into acids such as lactic acid. If left in contact with the tooth, these acids may cause demineralization, which is the dissolution of its mineral content. So when people are talking about like the acid in the fruit causing the demineralization, it's not the acid in the fruit. It's the acid in the biofilm that is created by the bacteria in the biofilm that is sticking to your teeth. And that is what's di diluting the minerals in your teeth. An important point, the process is dy dynamic as remineralization can occur if the acid is neutralized by saliva or mouthwash. So that's the whole point of your saliva. It's always trying to neutralize your mouth to a, a neutral pH so that remineralization can occur. If your mouth is constantly in a, in a acidic pH, then you're more likely to get tooth decay. You must 
allow time for your mouth to get back to a neutral pH. Fluoride toothpaste or dental varnish may aid remineralization. If demineralization continues over time, enough mineral content may be lost so that the soft organic material left behind disintegrates, forming a cavity or hole. Now, here's an important point. The impact such sugars have on the process is called cariogenicity. You don't need to know too much about that, but basically sucrose, although a bound glucose and fructose unit, is in fact more cariogenic than a mixture of equal parts of glucose and fructose. So sucrose is the white table sugar, and sucrose, I believe, is also in honey and uh, flowers even, things like that. But fruit generally has glucose and fructose as the main simple sugar. So that this is why most people are having problems. It's from the sugar in their diet, which is always, almost always sold in a very sticky format, sweets, cakes, whatever, all these things are sticky and they stick to the teeth and this is the real problem. Exposure is another problem. So the frequency with which the teeth are exposed to cariogenic acidic environments affects the likelihood of caries development. After meals or snacks, the bacteria in the mouth metabolize sugar, resulting in an acidic byproduct that decreases pH. As time progresses, the pH returns to normal due to the buffering capacity of saliva and the dissolved mineral content of two surfaces. During every exposure to the acidic environment, portions of the unorganic, um, some reason went back up, portions of the inorganic mineral content at the surface of the teeth dissolve and can remain dissolved for two hours. Since teeth are vulnerable during these acidic periods, the development of caries relies heavily on the frequency of acid exposure. This is a really important point right here. The frequency with which your mouth is exposed to a cariogenic acidic environment affects the likelihood of caries development. If you eat food all day long without stopping, without having an hour or two or three or four between meals, you're more likely to, to develop uh, dental caries, um, tooth decay. So if you are allowing your teeth to be exposed to acidic environment, so put it this way, there's, there's some people that will put, like my, my dentist was talking about taxi drivers that have sweets and they'll just sit a sweet in their mouth and they'll suck on it for hours and hours and then they'll have another one they're continuously exposing their mouth to an acidic environment. They're, they're sucking on this sweet, it's causing this acidic saliva, um, all the sugar in the saliva. It, they're coating their teeth in it constantly. So it's creating that kind of biofilm sticking to the teeth. And then you've got the bacteria there consuming all this sugar and they're releasing acid and, and this is what's causing the problem. Um, so the less time that your, your mouth is exposed to acidity, the more chance you are of uh, remineralizing. This is also why you want to brush your teeth or rinse after meals so that you get rid of um, the food stuck in between your teeth and you can get rid of some of the bacteria and reduce this acidity and allow your, your saliva to do its job. Um, during every exposure to this acidic environment, portions of the inorganic mineral content dissolve and can remain dissolved for two hours. That's why we must give time for our mouth to remineralize. And here's what fact. So, what factors are leading towards tooth decay that we can have like an impact on? Um, let's go through them. Dry mouth. So, if you're ever waking up in the morning, one time a dentist said to me, if you wake up in the morning with a dry mouth, you're more likely to be getting problems with your teeth. And that's why you need to brush first thing in the morning. Because when your mouth is dry like that, you've not got the, the saliva coating your teeth and remineralizing your teeth. And it's a, a good environment for the bacteria to continue to do its damage. So you need to be aware of dry mouth. Sticky foods, Sticky sweet foods, especially with sucrose. So if you're eating sweets and foods with sugar, it's sticking to your teeth. Not brushing 
or flossing your teeth because potentially what you're doing there is you're leaving food stuck in between your teeth or on your teeth and that's allowing this frequency of the exposure to happen. Less saliva. So anything that's drying your mouth out that means you're going to have less saliva is a problem. So any you could have a condition, you could have medication that's leading you to produce less saliva. These are all an issue. <clears throat> Not giving the mouth time to remineralize is also an issue. So if the mouth doesn't have time to, be, if you're just con continuously exposing your mouth to an acidic environment, that's a problem. So here's my story of my issues with teeth. So you can feel free to put your questions in the side, but I'll come back, I'll stop the share right now. So feel free to ask your questions if you've got any, but I hope most of that's made sense so far. We have a little bit more to go. So my story um, starts when I went on a raw vegan diet in 2011 and started to do this. And what I was hearing then at the time from a lot of people was you just had to brush with water and you didn't have to worry so much about your teeth because now you're eating a natural diet and you're less likely to get any problems. And a lot of people were saying they were on a fruit diet, they had the best teeth ever, their teeth were better than ever. So I bought into that idea and I love the idea of, you know, you're doing a natural diet. You don't need to do any of this um hygiene stuff anymore and cleaning your teeth and all the rest of it so I really bought into all that and gradually started to have um, not at first really issues but started to see plaque build up on the teeth which is like well you probably know what that looks like but I started to see this build up and uh, I wasn't really sure what to do about it and I guess I didn't really want to I uh, change anything or stop eating fruit or whatever, I wanted to keep doing that. So, and I don't know how long that took, because maybe it wasn't straight away. So, I was clearly having some issues there. And I think I was kind of wary of going to the dentist and stuff like that. And I, eventually I did go to the dentist and, had, and I, I developed some issues, but there was there was literally a time where I felt like the dentist had kind of lied to me or said something wrong or something. So I just left. And uh, so I wasn't, I, I kind of avoided dentists for a little while. And I had avoided, um, for a while I'd avoided toothpaste and cleaning my teeth, but then I went back to doing that. But I was still accumulating issues. And eventually the thing that really got to me was eventually I had experienced tooth decay um, well, uh, no, I experienced toothache. So I got really painful, um, a big pain in my, in my tooth, obviously. And at that point, you, you you can't do anything but go to the dentist. So ended up going to the dentist and realized I had quite a few problems with my teeth. And I had to get a lot of work done over the last few years. And at that point, I was starting to really investigate and trying to find what was the answer to this because it didn't make sense to me that the fruit diet was so great for everything else, but my teeth were, I was having this issue with my teeth. And this has been a real big, this was a real big problem for me. So I think I had more problems than most people. And uh, I was continually looking for the answer, looking for the answer and trying to find something. And... Um, I went to different presentations. Uh, Don Bennett does a presentation on it at Woodstock quite often. A guy called Frederick Patton did a presentation on it. And a lot of that information made sense. And I tried to do a lot of things that they were saying. And uh, I think that maybe I didn't listen fully or I didn't take in the, the thing, but I never really found an expert that was just telling me something crystal clear that was the main reason and that would change everything. I literally went to three or four or five different dentists over the years and was, at, was always asking them. And this is where, when I say that it's not, the problem's not sugar and it's not, it's, not, so it's not fruit and it's not the minerals and all that, is because I would say to dentists, is, it, is, it to, is the damage that I'm getting to do with acid on the teeth, is it to do with minerals, is it, 
to do with fruit? Is it to do? And they would always say it's not to do with that. They would just say, you're just not cleaning your teeth properly. And I was kind of like, that's when I kind of got a bit more obsessed with cleaning my teeth properly and flossing. And those things made a huge difference. And I did start using fluoride because the dentist said you need to start using fluoride. So I went along with him. I thought I'm not going to, you know, take my own advice anymore because I don't know anything, obviously. Let, let me take his advice. And that did make a difference as well. And what I realized was whenever I had a bit of sensitivity on a tooth, if I put fluoride on it, fluoride toothpaste, the, the sensitivity would almost go away instantly. So I started to actually realize, wait, there's something in this fluoride that's doing, doing something. And I'm not getting any downside to having the fluoride because people say all this weird stuff like it's calcifying your pineal gland and they say all this weird stuff about fluoride. And I didn't experience any negative side effects. So, and I didn't experience any positive side effects from natural toothpaste. So I didn't see any problem with using it. But I still had little bits of issues here, and my dentist would still say that. So eventually I went to this other dentist and I was speaking to him one day and he said, you know, you've got more damage than you should have for your age. And I was kind of aware of that, right? So um, and I was talking to him about this and I said, is it fruit? Could it be to do with fruit? And he says, it's not fruit. And I was, I was asking him about it. He said, no, it's not fruit. Fruit just, it doesn't, fruit doesn't cause this. Fruit doesn't cause to decay, right? And I was, so I was kind of confused by that. Um, because basically what he was saying is fruit doesn't stick to the teeth. Fruit's watery. It's, you know, it, it's, it gets dissolved easily. It, it comes out of your teeth. It doesn't stick to your teeth. So it's not fruit. <clears throat> He says, it has to be sugar. And he was basically saying, you must be eating sugar. And, and I was saying, well, I've not had sugar in like 10 years or something or whatever. I have had a few times, but not that often. And he said, he started to tell me about the idea of, um, you know, what happens with people that, that the, the sugar sticks to the teeth. And we must have gone into a conversation about dried fruit. And he said, dried fruit's the same as sugar. And that was when it kind of clicked with me, is that the thing that I'd really missed out all along and the thing that probably would have had the biggest impact is if I'd had a, a zero tolerance, tolerance policy on dried fruit. And my message now would be that that is the main thing to avoid. That's the first thing. Don't think about you're not eating enough greens. Don't think about you need more minerals. Don't think about the acidity in the fruit or the unripe fruits or whatever. The first thing, if you're doing a raw vegan diet to avoid is dried fruit. That is the main problem as far as I can, as far as I can see now. And I decided from that day on to stop dried fruit completely. And that included dates and that included raisins and whatever, figs, dried figs, uh, dried bananas. I just stopped that all completely. And what I noticed when I gave up the dried fruit was I basically don't really need to floss anymore because there isn't really anything to floss out. That all the time, what was sticking to my teeth was always dried fruit. It was always dates, which I used to have quite a lot. And I, and, and I was kind of recommended to do that years ago when I started on a raw vegan diet. People were saying, you know, dates are a good are a good. Uh, source of calories or whatever. So I kind of thought I couldn't maybe live without dates. And um, now I'm realizing that the dates were probably much more of the problem. And when I think about the other people that had problems, when we think about Tim Van Orden, Michael Arnstein, Michael Arnstein even has a video where he says the dates are the problem. Um, Durian Ryder had to replace a lot of his teeth. And I think really dates were the issue there as well. So my big appeal to you all is if you're starting to have issues of sensitivity, cut out all dried fruit, 100%. Don't even have a little bit of it. Cut it all out completely and see how you go. Because my experience has been a complete change from giving up dried fruit where, um, as I say, I don't have food sticking to my teeth. I don't have anything in between my teeth. I barely need to floss. Um, I'm not getting any of the sensitivity anymore. And 
I would say that the flossing is important as well. You don't have to use um, you don't have to use floss, but you can use flossing sticks and things that are quite nice to use. Those will help a lot and will help prevent uh, problems. Um, leaving gaps between your meals, rinsing out your mouth so that once again you're you're rinsing out um, anything stuck between your teeth. And when people talk about oil pulling, oil pulling is the same as rinsing your mouth with water. There's no difference. Oil pulling is the same thing. The, the, the thing that is making the difference is not the oil. It is the process of rinsing your mouth. So obviously you can't rinse your mouth with orange juice or something and have the same impact. But as long as it's something like water, oil's the same. And other liquids would be the same, but basically water being the main thing. Because you're rinsing your teeth out. The oil's not doing anything. It's actually your saliva that remineralizes your teeth. It's, it's not the oil. So <clears throat> that is uh, the main thing. So when we're talking about the main culprits, why do raw vegans get problems with their teeth? Well, one is a lot of them stop brushing their teeth. They stop using um, any kind of hygiene sometimes. People get really caught up in the idea of like a natural diet, natural lifestyle. They want to get rid of all the um, chemicals from their life, so they stop brushing their teeth, stop doing different things. And that's not a good idea. Um, they might not floss. They might never have flossed. So that's not great either. They often have dried fruit in their diet. Now, not every day, not every meal, but a lot of raw vegans um, do go through times where they have almost rely on things like dates and uh, raisins and things like that, especially athletes who go out running, go out cycling. They don't want to take a big bag of bananas with them or peaches or oranges or something, so they take dried fruit with them. That's why we see athletes getting problems. At the same time, the dry mouth thing. So if you're going out running for hours at a time, cycling, your mouth's always open and it's drying out, that's also an issue. The exposure, anything that means that your mouth is exposed to the, ex the acidic environment that's caused when you start eating. So if you're constantly eating all day long, that's also an issue. That's also a problem. Um, anything sticking to your mouth, sticking to your teeth, exposing your mouth to it more. These are the main problems and these are the things that are causing raw vegans to having problems with their teeth, I believe. And I also think that if you, if, if none of it works, then you really need to consider brushing your teeth more, three or four times a day, uh, rinsing after every meal, flossing all the time, if, if nothing else is working. But to me, the number one thing I want to reiterate is eliminating dried fruit. Now, if you don't have issues with your teeth, your dentist's fine, then don't worry about it. But if you are getting issues, that's the first thing and the priority thing to do is get rid of dates, get rid of raisins, and replace it with any fruit. What I found is even something really sweet like banana smoothie or whatever, or, um, or even acidic like orange juice, the, they don't have the same effect. They're not, have, not having the same problems with those things because they wash out of the mouth so easily. They don't stick between the teeth. Other fruits don't stick between the teeth. They wash out of the mouth. So that's really what we want to do. And um, if any of you have any other questions or whatever, you can ask. But that's basically the end of the presentation. Uh, the main points of the presentation to go over again, when people are having problems with their teeth in the raw vegan diet, that problem is the same as everyone else. It's tooth decay. It's not a mineral problem. It's not a deficiency. It's not acids in the fruit. It is tooth decay. And if you want to prove that to yourself, you just speak to a dentist and you ask them to look at it and you ask their opinion. You could get multiple opinions. They're going to come back to you and say the same thing. It is, called, it is tooth decay. It's the same process. The same thing that they see in every, everyone else. The cause of tooth decay is the process of um, a biofilm, essentially a film of, of the food that you're eating and everything sticking to your teeth, which, and that film includes bacteria. Those bacteria process 
mostly the fermentable carbohydrates, the simple sugars in your diet, turn them into acid and the, the acid um, hurts the teeth. The process is meant to, what's meant to happen is that's meant to wash off. Your, your saliva comes in, remineralizes the teeth, re-strengthens re your teeth. That's what's meant to happen. Um, but what happens is that if the mouth and the teeth are exposed for too long to this acidic environment, if they're exposed for too long to it, then uh, tooth decay can happen. And uh, the things that are going to increase the likelihood of tooth decay happening is a dry mouth, less saliva, and the, the, um, the, the presence of fermentable carbohydrates, aka sugar, <clears throat> and uh, a long exposure of your, your teeth to this acidic environment. How do we avoid it? Well, brushing our teeth helps, flossing helps, fluoride helps in the toothpaste, uh, but let's not cause it. That's my main issue here is people are causing it with too much sticky food. In the, in the usual world, it is sugar that people are consuming in the form of cakes, biscuits, sweets, candies, and so on. In the raw vegan diet, we eat plenty of fruit, but is that the problem? It would turn out that fruit's not really the problem because fruit doesn't stick to the teeth. Fruit is mostly water and fiber, and the sugars in fruit do not stick to the teeth like that. But if we dry fruit, it becomes very similar to sugary sweets and everything else. It sticks to the mouth, it sticks to the teeth. And if we don't, if we're not very vigilant with our oral health, care routine, then we can get damage. But to eliminate that, uh, the risk of that, eliminate dried fruit out completely, and you will find that you will not get as many problems as other people. So thank you for watching tonight. I hope you got something out of this presentation. Feel free to um, share this information with others. It will be on YouTube, hopefully, and it will be up on maybe Facebook as well, so we can share it. But I'm really, I really want to make sure people are clear on this. This is the problem. It's 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 not a hundred other things that people people tell you. This is the main thing to work on. The main thing to make a change um, is is getting rid of the the dried fruit. And if you're not brushing your teeth, you should do that. If you're not flossing, but I'm assuming that you're probably doing these things. So these uh, all these things together. But I think many people will have a big, make a big change. So thank you very much for watching today. And uh, if you want to find more information out about this kind of diet and lifestyle, you can come to the UK Fruit Fest, fruitfest.co.uk. You can uh, register and book now. It is open to book and there are still some places left. So feel free to have a look at that information. If you would like to speak to me about coaching, I'll put a link below. You can have a look at my... Uh, coaching programs and see if it's something you might be interested in and uh, feel free to contact me about that and um, has anyone got any questions before we go is everyone happy is everyone clear with what we've shared i'll put down the thing for fruit fest if you're interested in coming you can have a look at fruit fest It was important to me to try and get this message out to people because if I'd come across this five or six years ago, it would have saved me a lot of time, uh, quite a lot of money in dental work. Um, and just a lot of pain because having tooth problems is pain. It's not nice. And uh, just a lot of confusion and everything else. And I didn't really have someone that was very clear on what I should have been doing. So I hope that this gives you some uh, support, some information. Uh, for now, we're going to end the, what do you call this, the webinar. Thank you for joining tonight. And if you want to get in touch and you want me to talk about other things, sorry, in another webinar, then feel free to email me, send a message. Put a comment below if you're on YouTube. 
and uh, we'll keep the conversation going. What we're trying to do here is provide information to help people transition effectively to a raw vegan diet to allow them to experience the best health possible and really have the best life possible as a result of that. Okay, so here's a question from Jonas Stai. I've heard that brushing your teeth just after eating a meal is bad. What do you know about it? Yeah, so this is the idea that if you if you have something acidic like like oranges or something, and then you brush your teeth, that your teeth at that point are, um, you know, part of the surface of the teeth is dissolved, so that you're gonna you'll destroy the teeth by brushing them. It's this isn't really the problem though. Once again. Um, you probably shouldn't brush just after a meal. But the fact that you are brushing is not, you're not brushing your teeth away. You, you're not destroying the enamel of the teeth. Um, I think it is a, it's a small issue, but as long as your teeth are able to remineralize, it won't be a problem anyway. Uh, you would be better off uh, rinsing after a meal rather than brushing right after a meal. So you're better off rinsing, but it's not that, it, it's not really the big issue. People br brushing after a meal isn't really what's causing their tooth decay. Tooth decay is caused by the things we went through already. So you could brush right after a meal if you wanted to. Um, I would suggest that you rinse and maybe floss after a meal. I mean, I don't really do a lot of rinsing and flossing after a meal at the moment because it's made such a difference to me to cut out all the dried fruit. So I don't really have a lot of anything sticking in between my teeth and everything. So any other questions? I'm just going to eat some. If you want me to prove that I've had some problems with my teeth, I can show you. There's a teeth, tooth that I lost. Uh, there's one that I lost. So I've, I've lost some teeth literally in the last five, six years. But I would have to say that I had teeth problems when I was younger. My tooth, my tooth front teeth have been basically what's called veneers or they're kind of like fake for since I was about 12. My front two teeth worn, wore down when I was about 12 and they couldn't really understand why that was happening. And they believed it was maybe to do with acid reflux. So literally, because, and, and so here's the thing, a dentist can see erosion in a tooth and they can go, wait, what's this? What the hell's happening here? If that happens, you'll be sent to like a, a dental hospital or something. So this is why, you know, if you go to your dentist, they'll be able to tell you that you've just got this to get. If, if you've got erosion from acidic fruit, they'll be like completely confused. They'll be like, what the hell's happening to your teeth? They will not have a clue. And this is what happened to me when I was younger. My tooth front teeth were eroding. It doesn't make, it, it's, it's not a common thing to happen. I literally went to the dental hospital in Glasgow. They wanted to have students round to look at it because it was such a rare thing. So they, they, they understand these things. They know what's happening. Uh, and they reckoned it was maybe to do with acid reflux. And I went to the doctors about acid reflux. It's all funny, obviously, it's all to do with the diet. But um, yeah, I had acid reflux for many years. Now on a fruit diet, you know, you would think m much more acidic diet, but my acid reflux is what is like, if I get acid reflux, it's like water. It's literally like water coming into my mouth. Some of you have probably had acid reflux where it comes into your mouth, it's like burning. Um, it's, it's like vomit, kind of, it's like sickness. It tastes, not taste, but it feels like sick coming into your mouth. Um, but on a raw vegan diet, it's like water coming back into the mouth. So it's very strange, very different. But yeah, apparently my two front teeth were eroding because of, um, because of that. <laughs> so I had, had some cavities when I was younger, had damage to my two front teeth and used to eat a lot of sugar, major, major big sugar diet. And then I decided I'm going to cut out sugar and I cut out sugar completely, literally did cut out sugar completely. And I thought, man, when I go to the dentist, he's going to be amazed. And I, I still had 
uh, a dental ca uh, cavity. So, um, so yeah, I guess I'd, I still had, had problems with my teeth and maybe weaknesses with my teeth. Any other questions before we finish? Okay, thanks a lot for watching, guys. We'll see you maybe in the next one. And I'll try and keep doing these little videos every couple of weeks. And you can, if you've got any suggestions of what you'd like us to talk to, about, um, if there's something I can't answer, I'll be able to pass you on to the right person, hopefully. Um, if you're interested in getting coaching, have a look at the information. It's not for everyone, but for someone that's serious about making this change, then have a look at that and we'll see you in another video. Thank you very much.